another Django tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to create a delete button. <clears throat> and um, and the views associated with that. This is my 250th Python or Django tutorial, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I'm also using a new screen recorder because the other one was really pissing me off. This is like my third one, so it might be time to write our own code here for this one. Um, anyhow, uh, let's get started. We're going to create a button, but first we need to create a header. So let's do that first. We'll do um, th and th, close out th, and we'll say delete post. Yeah, um, that was pretty simple, right? We're going to copy this button, and then we're going to change it. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it down here. And first thing we're going to change is the URL, because we don't want to go to edit post. We want to delete post, so we'll do delete post. And then um, slug equal this post dot slug is going to stay the same. Uh, class class btn is going to stay there and then btn hyphen we're going to change default to danger that will give us a red button and then class uh, glyphy icon however you freaking pronounce these things uh, we're going to change this to trash I think that's the trash can trash just guessing off the top of my head and then we're going to change this one down here edit to delete save that and then we're going to copy this and we're going to go down to the else statement and paste that in there. Boom, just like that. And now I don't want to purchase you. Refresh. All right, so we get the debug message. If you saw what I had up there before, it said messages.html doesn't exist. We're actually going to create that in this tutorial. Uh, this is like my third time doing this tutorial because my recorder sucks. Anyhow, um, this right here, this message, no reverse match at blog backend post. Reverse for delete post with arguments uh, empty and then uh, keyword arguments slug and post not found zero patterns tried when you see reverse what I'm getting at here is when you see reverse that has to do with the URLs so if you see a debug message that says reverse the first thing you go to is your URLs all right it doesn't say that to you it doesn't go hey uh, go check out your URL, your URLs but after you've done this for a very long time you do realize what you are um, looking for so this says reverse not found so we need to go to URLs so we'll go there and why is it not found well because we didn't create that yet so let's go ahead and create that I'm gonna be lazy and copy this one right here copy so I'm just gonna put my cursor behind there hit uh, paste it in um, so back end and then our slug is all going to be the same. Edit is going to now become delete. All right. And then our views, edit is going to become delete. Delete. And then our name down here is going to become delete. Pretty simple. All right. So now we created our URLs. Let's go back into our. Uh, browser here and we'll refresh we should no longer get this message okay so I'm not getting anything now so what would you do in, th in this situation well actually if you refresh a couple times and you get nothing the next step should probably be check to see if my server is working so I'll go over here and it looks like it's not working all right I see all this mumbo jumbo crap down here, if you read attribute error, module blog.views has no attribute delete message. Well, if blog.views has no attribute delete message, you can think of the attribute as a function. Well, we didn't create that function. So let's go over and create that function to fix this error. So in your views.py file, uh, before we even actually write the code, let's go ahead and import two things. Um, so I don't have to come back up here and do this again. All right, so let's go ahead and do uh, from Django uh, dot HTTP and then import capital HTTP 
404. I'll explain what that does in a second. And then we're going to go uh, from Django contrib import messages. And we'll see how that works in a couple of minutes. All right. All right. So for HTTP 404, what happens is if we uh, raise an error or raise an HTTP 404, uh, what we're gonna, what it does is it finds our 404 page and displays that. So that's what we're gonna do here. I mean, there might be a better solution for how we're gonna use this, or I don't know. We'll figure it out. So define uh, delete post. Somebody spell delete delete underscore post. Is that what we called it? I hope that's what we called it. And then we're gonna do request. Uh, comma slug drawing a blank and then we're gonna do um, I'm actually gonna check to see if a user is actual user on our site uh, or hold on let me think about this for a second Let's, let's just see if the user is a user that's allowed in the admin section. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. And then we're going to um, also see if the user is a super user, and then they will be able to delete the uh, post. So let's go ahead and do uh, if not request dot user or not uh, request dot user is underscore super user we're going to do something so we're going to raise http 404 so we're going to display a 404 i might come back and change this um but for now what happens is if the user um is not a val user on the back end of our site or is not the super user uh well let's change this to um user dot is underscore staff all right uh if not request user dot is staff that's um anybody under the super user all right because if you go into your admin section uh, i really want to do this yeah so you guys understand it uh go to your admin oh, i do not remember what I signed in as. Oh, sweet. I'll have to sign in. Anywho, if you go to users, click here. And click on admin real quick. Come down here. Um, you see there's statuses. There's a staff status and there's a super user status. Um, Anybody under the super user, like, doesn't have all the permissions would be a staff member. And then um, super user has all the permissions. So we're checking if the person's a staff or a super user. Basically, that's what I'm doing with the code right here. So if not request.user is staff or not request user is, is not super user, uh, we're going to raise a 404. So if the user is not staff or super user, we're going to set um, raise a 404 so we'll display a 404 page which we haven't built but we will we'll, we'll do something goofy with that I guess anyhow get back to where I was let's uh, get the actual post we're going to delete so we'll do post is equal to get object 404 capital post and then slug equal to slug then we're going to do post dot delete just like that, and now delete the post. Then we need a way to confirm that we delete the post because in the back end, if we hit delete post, uh, the post is going to disappear. And if you're not quick enough to notice that it disappeared, then you won't know if you actually delete it. Well, I guess you could look through it and that one would be missing, but it'd be nice to display a message to the user saying, hey, we delete the message. So let's go ahead and do messages. Uh, dot success and we're going to say uh, request 
It's the first argument, and then it takes the second argument, the actual message. So we'll say successfully delete it, just like not like that, like this, and then we'll return and redirect. A lot of brain force there, and we're just gonna redirect back to the um, list of posts back end. So list of post back in just like that all right um so we should now be able to delete messages so back in our browser i'm gonna get out of here if you guys have questions about the what i did with checking if it's a uh, user or a super user let me know other who otherwise you know we'll get more into that when we actually start um blocking people from our back end so blog backslash back end slash post should give us a list of our post there's our list hmm. trash can didn't show up I bet you I know why go to your static we don't have the fonts loaded from uh, bootstrap you can download bootstrap and put your fonts at the same level CSS and JavaScript. I'm not going to do that at the moment, but I'll show you how. Um, so you download it from Bootstrap, the whole package, put the fonts file in the same levels, JavaScript and CSS, then throw in a link, just copy one of these and change it to fonts. Whatever the hell heck it is, and throw it in there. All right, that's how we'll do it. Uh, I'll do it eventually, but not right now in this tutorial. Anyhow, back to where we were, what were we doing? Oh, we're going to delete something. So back on our blog backend post, let's go ahead and delete that. Boom, it disappeared. But if I wasn't quick enough, I wouldn't have known it disappeared or if I didn't have two posts. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, put a message in there so we know that it deleted. So... I don't want to do this. Let's go ahead and create, not at that level, on blog, go ahead and create a new file. Save it as messages.html. And you'll see why we will do this.html. Just like that, in here, we're going to get ahead and write some code. The first one's going to be an if statement. So curly braces, 2% symbols. In between there, we'll do if messages, just like that. So if we have a message, then display it. If not, don't display it. Basically, that's what I'm going for here. We're going to go for end if right there. Um, then we got to do a for loop. So for 2% symbols for message, so message is going to be our temporary variable. In messages, we are going to loop through our messages because there could be multiple messages, but in this case, we're going to have one. And then our N4. And then in here, we're going to put something in here to display. We're going to use uh, Bootstrap's alert messages. But first, I need a if message I'm gonna say if it has message tags display that and the message tags would is gonna be like uh, the class um, if you look back where's views there it is you see it's messages dot success well success is actually the class all right so if we go to bootstrap get bootstrap just like that and we go in here And we go to components. Sorry, it's being slow. Slow. Come on. All right, we'll start writing some code and then we'll come back to that. All right, so take my word for it for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do another if statement. And we're going to say if message has tags. So if it has like a tag, then we're going to do something. So we got to put an end if here. So that's going to be uh, 
and this. All right, in between here, we're going to put a div. We're going to say div class um, inside here, we're going to do alert and alert. And then right here, hyphen, we're going to do a variable tag and we're going to say message dot tags. So if we don't have message tags, it's not going to display this div. Um, yeah. So I had to think about that for a second. Uh, anyhow, let's go ahead and put a carrot here to close out the opening div tag. And then we'll do uh, another variable in here. And this is going to be message. All right. And then here we're going to do ending div tag so the message is our actual message our second argument in our views right here successfully delete it all right so that's a message and then the message tags that comes from success right here and we're going to save that file um back here let's see if this loaded yet if you go down to alerts and you come down here you can see div class alert alert and then we did the hyphen and then we're going to get success that is the same as in our views, success, all right? The only one I can't, that doesn't work, um, you would have to code it differently, is danger, because if you go to Django, oops, it's not how you spell that, Django message, messages framework, um, in here, it gives you a rundown of the possible messages. So if you're curious on how messages framework works, uh, go ahead and check it out. I'm not going to waste time looking at it. Just take my word for it for now. Uh, one last thing we have to do before we can test this is open your base.html, which I already have mine open. And we're going to go right above our block content. And we're going to go ahead and include our messages HTML here. So opening tag, well, not there. Opening tag, and we'll do include, and I just got really hungry. Blog and messages.html, just like this. We'll save it. And the reason I put it here is because if we want to use different messages throughout our site, uh, we could always have them displayed um, for now. Uh, or we could just tie them into the back end. We could actually make a base dot base back end HTML, something like that. We could do something like that, but uh, it just sounds like a lot of work and lazy, so we're not going to do that. Anyhow, just refresh your page real quick so it just loads up the proper HTML. And you may or may not get to successfully delete it, but if I delete my last and standing post in here, I should get successfully delete it. Now, if I refresh, I have nothing and the message goes away. So, what did we call our URL for new post? New, all right, all right. genius, I'm a genius, just like that. No, that's not what I call it. I'm not a genius. Uh, post new. I thought it was a genius. All right, post backslash new. All right, so I'm going to create one more post so we can take a look at this. This is a post. This is the content uh, category snippet. And we're going to work on tech categories next tutorial. This is SEO. This is SEO. And status, well, doesn't really matter, but we'll make it published. Save it. Oh, it still works. That's awesome. And then we'll go to backend slash post. So it is. Now it's blog backend 
slash post. Gotta make like a menu button here so I don't have to do all this typing. And then once again, we can delete it. Boom. Delete it. Successfully delete it. And that's how you delete posts from the back end. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, other ha otherwise, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it. And in the next tutorial, we will uh, work with our either our comments or our categories. We'll figure it out when I get there. See ya.